program. Okay, so here's the book. Comes out April 16th. And without further ado, I'd like to read you just a little section. One day, as I prepared to start shooting a new consumer fitness program, one of the producers scheduled a call with my husband. I thought, that's weird. Why would this producer want to talk about my preparations for this project with my husband instead of me directly? Well, Brett took the call in our home office and I just went about my business. When he finished the call, I could tell that he was disturbed. So in true wifey form, I prodded him and poked him and bugged him until he reluctantly opened up. The producer who had called did so to suggest that Brett have a conversation with me about getting in quote, tip top shape for the next project. This producer said, we think that her next program could really crush it if maybe she were to lose a little weight or, you know, tightened up. You know, if she could really get that inspirational physique that women want. A part of me wanted to punch this guy in the throat and tell the world what was going on. But a part of me, the part of me that already felt like an imposter, got the best of me. And I was overtaken with feelings of shame and embarrassment. I felt my face flush. I can't even tell you how much shame and humiliation I felt that someone called my husband to share the suggestion. In my overactive imagination, all I could do is picture a room full of executives with red, pan, red pens in their hands, gathered around a high def oversized photo of me. I could picture them circling every dimple, every wrinkle, every, every roll, every stretch mark. Of course, that call only confirmed what I was already saying all along in my own head. And even though this conversation had been private, I felt like I'd been exposed to the world. This was confirmation of my deepest insecurities, that I didn't belong, that I had no business calling myself a fitness professional. Nonetheless, I wasn't going to go down without a fight. I thought, well, maybe if I lose a few pounds, I would actually feel like I deserve to be called a fitness expert. Holy cow, it is crazy for me now to think back on how I thought then, how unhealthy my thinking was. Whether it was fueled by my shame or fear of being found out, in that moment, I literally stopped caring about my health. All that mattered was that I needed to lose a few pounds. I'd been given my orders and I was on a no fail mission to lose that weight via any means possible. I wanted desperately to prove to myself and to the world that I deserved this identity that didn't feel like I belonged to. Now, I rarely weighed myself, but that day I jumped on the scale. And as I looked between my toes, through my tears, in my eyes, I could see a number, a number lower than what I thought I weighed. Now, ladies, you know how good that should have felt, but it didn't. I just looked down at that number and I cried because here I was at my thinnest, the least I'd weighed as an adult. And now I was being asked to lose more weight. How was I supposed to do that when I was already eating clean? When I was already exercising three hours a day? I felt like there's something wrong with me. I was broken. I had no other option but to go on a crash diet. I was determined to get a body, a body that people would find, quote, inspirational. I wanted to prove to the producers and to the world that I belonged. So first I tried a diet that was created by fitness models, the type that go on stage for competition. Well, that didn't work for me. Then I tried a low fat, high protein crash meal plan, nothing. Then I tried a low carb route, gluten-free, 
I tried drinking shakes all day, tracking my macros, eating like a cave woman, and following every popular diet you've probably heard of, but nothing was working. I did them all, but nothing helped me to lose weight. There had to be something wrong with me. So I decided I only had one thing left to try, and that was to diet harder, a crash diet. So I cut my calories and my portion sizes considerably. I added more hours to my already ridiculous daily grind of exercise. I rarely drank water so that I wouldn't hold on to extra fluids. By the way, drinking less water to look leaner is one of the worst pieces of advice floating around fitness circles. Sound miserable? It was. But guess what? I lost a few pounds. Finally. Now, when you shoot a consumer video, there's a team of people, a team of professionals who need to sign off on every detail, including your hair, your makeup, your outfit, the look of the set, every cast member, what every cast member is wearing, etc. And most people would just die to be in a fitness video. I, however, was now feeling incredibly self-conscious for the first time in my life. There I was, a grown woman, standing half naked in tight, tiny little bike shorts and a short bra top, awaiting approval from a table of decision makers as I stood there before them, having just spent months dieting and exercising. I'd never been so thin and I'd never been so weak. I carefully follow the eyes and the subsequent facial express expressions of each person as he or she scanned my body up and down in silence. Now, to be polite, if someone had a thought or a comment, they would whisper it to the person sitting next to them. And I guess this was to help me avoid any embarrassment. Now, just picture yourself standing there. Picture yourself standing half naked in front of a group of people, judging your physique, whispering about you. Here's the deal. It's their job. I know it's their job. I know these people were hired to make sure I looked my best. They were doing that, I guess, in my best interest. And I knew that, but at the same time, I wanted to scream, stop! And that's how all fitness videos work, all of them. When they were finally finished examining my body, they said, you look really good. Wow, you've never looked better. <sighs> On our first day of shooting, I posted a few pictures to my Instagram. I knew that I looked horrible. I knew that I was miserable that I was on the brink of crying, that I hadn't slept, I, I couldn't think straight, I felt weak, all I could think about was food, I felt tortured, I, I'd never been so unhealthy in all my life. But I posted these pictures to Instagram and some of the first comments were, wow, you lost weight, you look horrible. And then one other person commented, are you eating enough? You look anorexic. But 99.9% .9 of the comments were, hashtag goals, you look amazing. What's this new program you're doing? You look amazing. Wow, you've never looked better. Hashtag abs, I want your body. Compliment after compliment after compliment. Man, does that fuck with your head. In between takes, I would run to the dressing room and just cry. And I didn't know why. I was just having a mental breakdown. I knew I couldn't sustain this. I knew what I was doing wasn't healthy. I knew, looking back on it now, how messed up it was. But at the time, I was knee deep in it. And I think that's one of the reasons why it was so important for me to write this book. 